Eamon Khan here for seconds out with Chris Pinnell Smith's best mate and trainer, Shane McGuigan, guiding him to a victory, avenging a defeat to Richard Rackpour at Selhurst Park. Just talk me through the feeling of getting Chris over the line and what, what was a real good win for him. Yeah, pure elation, really. Um, Oh, look, obviously, the, the, after about five rounds, I believe I, I just felt like it was our night. It was, you know, Chris was boxing really, really well. Um, you know, Richard couldn't deal with him, couldn't deal with the, with the change of pace, couldn't deal with the little head movements on the inside, couldn't deal with getting pushed back. But then, um, you know, just for him to stay disciplined was was exactly what I wanted. You know, as a as a coach with Chris, when he you know when he was not you know he was a he was a bookies uh, Lawrence was the bookies favourite to knock Chris out. Um, it was people lumping loads of money um, on that and obviously for him to, to go out there and, and execute one of the best his best performances against Lawrence Coley when he really needed to this was very similar it was like people were expecting you know your Wadi Camacho the full chucking more and more money on, on, on these guys to knock out Chris Williams Mib and it's hilarious because he keeps proving these people wrong to also prove wrong the doubters who were saying that he was deteriorating heading into this fight no, he didn't take many shots today, did he? Mm, no. Exactly. So, you know, he can he takes shots. Um, it's, it's, he takes silly shots you know, against Masternick, but I mean, as much as he says he doesn't want to or he was, oh, I'm not going to do it, when you go from 15,000 outside, when, you, when, you, you know, when you've really got to switch yourself on against Lawrence Cody, who I've had in the gym for, for years, he knew how, how, you know, how elite he had to perform that night. And then to go in against Masternick that hadn't got over their line, giving people decent tests, but then going to a three thousand seater, it's all of the all of the seats are on one side. It just it just didn't get up for it. And as much as he said he he was go, he wasn't going to, he just didn't get up for it. And I feel like this is where he belongs. He belongs um, in big tests, in big challenges when his back's against the wall. That's when he performs the best. Are you expecting more from Richard? Uh, no. No, and that's no disrespect to him, but I just feel like his style, where he was raw before, and he's tried to be too too technical and too disciplined, and he wasn't even jabbing. He was he paused the jab to loop the right hand and throw. We got wide left hooks. So it's easy to offset guys like that, and that's exactly what Chris was doing. He was staying. He was dipping in his legs, triggering him, rolling. Uh, and just just adjusting the whole night, and, and Richard just couldn't get he couldn't get going, and and, and that was a testament to Chris Bill and Smith. If you just stood there and let him meet you, of course, like that's that's what what Richard's been what, that's what Richard's been up against for the last few fights. That doesn't prepare you for world title fights. Do you think he has it in his game to capture a world, uh, world title? On yeah, I, I think Richard Rappel still got it. He's 34 years of age. He doesn't. Um, he's. That sort of fighter is all wrong for, for Richard Riappel. And, um, you know, he can get better and, he, and he's got all of the gifts. He's got good balance, got good coordination um, and he can punch. Uh, and he can clearly hold a shot because Chris hit him a lot of decent shots, um, even though they might not have been as telling. But I could see up close he was sliding them through. He's got, and he's also got a little bit, he's got that as well. He's got some, got some guts and still kept trying to win. With that said, the 115, 112 twice on the scorecards. Horrific. Mm. 115, 112 twice. I thought it was once. I, it was I thought it was, that is just disgraceful. I said it to Ben Shalom afterwards. I said it's disgraceful. If Chris hasn't got the point, I can't believe it. It's, it's sickening. And that's what ruins boxing. That shit ruins boxing. Right? It really does. So, um, disappointing. But um, we can't let that deter, de deter uh, or take away from uh, Chris Bill Smith's victory and the way he boxed. Unification fights are on the horizon now. Which is the toughest test out of the current Opa world champions? Opatea is the toughest test, of course. Um, closely followed by Ramirez because people will kind of sleep on him because uh, I feel like um, he's calm and comfortable in that punching distance. He boxed a guy in Gulamari and he was a massive puncher, stood with him and, and won. Um, he's got that Mexican toughness. And I think him, you know, Chris versus him is a fantastic fight. It's also one that I would love. And I think that, um, you know, if you win the WBC, Badu Jack was the world was the world champion. He's give up, and then obviously Noel, uh, Noel Givers uh, just won it. So it's not as big of a win, and I don't think it really merits boxing in America. So for Chris, he would love that Ramirez fight, and he wants uh, he wants an undisputed fight. So hopefully. 
Opate can do his business and, and pick up one of the belts. And listen, like me, Chris would box him in the morning, but for, for myself looking after him, it's just the most important thing is, um, is making sure that he gets the opportunity to box for an undisputed. Because if it's there, and the way the boxing is at the moment, the way um, Riyadh season is, is coming in and, and take over, he, they can make those fights happen. Uh, Opsay of SWC, and you know, and we can go and either work with Gold, Golden Boy and Boxer, or you know, we can we can see what see what's about to get the, to get uh, Gilberto Ramirez. Very lastly, you said that guiding Chris Bill and Smith to a world title would be your greatest piece of work. You keep topping that now. He's defending that world title. He's now avenged the defeat he had to react poor in the professional ranks. How sweet a victory is it for yourself? Mm. This is the only blemish on on his record, and he's gone and done it. And um, extremely happy, extremely proud of him. Um, he keeps he keeps, you know, defying all odds and um, and looking for extra extra percentages and that is the most important thing. It's a, it's a coach's dream for someone that keeps grounded. He's got money. He's got fame. Oh, to a certain degree now, um, he's achieved everything he wants to. But he still takes himself away for six months away from his family on and off to come down to Leighton and train. You know what I mean? And doesn't make you know no issues. Um, about about anything, and you know, he doesn't want to change nothing. He's happy where he's at, and that is the most important thing. Congratulations, Shane! Thanks for taking us out.